What do you worry about? What weighs on you? What is it sometimes that you wonder and think of? I'm not quite sure how this is going to turn or what this will end up in. What is it that hmm, you sometimes struggle with or wrestle with and realize there is no easy solution? What is it? I love our scriptures because they are so real. And our people about whom the scriptures write, they're real flesh and blood, just like you and I. Jacob had betrayed his brother. Betrayed, backstabbed, woo, big time. He ran for his life. He came back home and was about to meet the brother whom he had betrayed. And at night, Jacob is wrestling and wrestling and wrestling for his life. And he feels almost like overcome. It's too big, oh, superhuman what he is wrestling with. And in the process of wrestling, he gets hurt, he gets injured, but he also gets blessed. Now, that is real. That is even more than just worrying or being concerned about. Those are some of the big powers that we sometimes wrestle with. Henry Now, and one of my spiritual writers whom I favor, who speaks to me, experienced personally a deep, deep, dark depression, and he writes about it. And as he describes it, he describes it as just being frozen, unable to function, like being in a concrete block. And while on one hand, the, the head to him said, I should, I would, I could, I I'm, people tell me, doctors tell me I should move, I should get out, but it's like the life energy drained from him, unable to move, just stuck, fully, deeply stuck in a deep, dark night of the soul sometimes, just not being able to move. Or we have the experience from personal, us, or from others, that some people are just getting hooked. Hooked up with the wrong crowd, getting into drugs, getting into drinking, getting into... And it's such a... Once you're hooked, once you're in that, it's so hard to get out of it. Now, my hooks are not very big. It's just lots of ice cream, uh, some brownies, and eating a lot of that. Sometimes when I don't feel well, I'm an emotional eater. And I know I can eat more. I can eat more, but I don't need it. So it's sometimes I'm in that spiral and feel like, ah. Uh, it's, I know it on one hand, not good for me. On the other hand, I feel the craving. It's almost like I want more of what I don't need. Give me more, give me more, and I don't need it. It's not good for me. So sometimes I have a little bit of a hook right there. And or you see it in movies. Anyone uh, think of Harry Potter? the dementors who come, the dark cloud, and sucking the life, the soul out of people. It's like the fun suckers, the life suckers. Some people around you seem to just pull all the positive energy out of it, out of you or out of a situation or a sense. So We all know it, don't we? Don't we? We do. And that is the dark part in our swirl, in our combinations. 
And I think what I love about our scriptures and our life experiences is that we do not have to run from it. Because sometimes it's like the further you run, the bigger it gets, or it's like something you fight and fight very hard with can get bigger while you fight it. Can be, uh, you can give it more air like a fire that burns hotter and brighter and becomes more consuming. A couple of things about the darkness and the light that our scriptures promise that God's light shines into the darkness. It's not talking about there is no darkness. God's light shines into the darkness, coming into our darkness. And sometimes it comes through other people, like Henry Nouwen when he was deep dark in the depression. Besides seeing physicians, getting medication and all, he had a good friend who came in to visit him regularly who didn't say a thing, just came and massaged his feet, was a presence, just being there with him in and through the darkness. Three things I found helpful in dealing with worries, with darkness, with frustration, with pain, with struggles, is first of all, acknowledge it, see it, and name it. It's beautiful, our creation story, when it says God separated light from dark, and he called one day, and he called the other one night. It's almost like name it. The darkness, the depression, the struggle, the worry, just to give it a name and name it already helps. Second thing is share it with someone, whether someone is close by who cares, share it with a good friend, share it with a partner, just do not keep it all to yourself. Just Share it. And sit with it in hope because we have this hope that God's powerful light can come into the darkness. You know, the darkest night, the night is the darkest right before sunrise. It's the darkest right before the sunrise. The stars are most visible in the darkness of the night. And the Statue of Liberty with a torch holding it up bright in the harbor is most visible at night to those who are coming. There is light. Sometimes it doesn't feel like, sometimes we wrestle, sometimes we struggle, sometimes we worry, sometimes it's too much for us to carry on our own. It is light and day, darkness and light. It is a big mess, isn't it? but opening up with that, naming it, sharing it, in hope of transformation. Will you do that?